petition calling for mandatory face-to-face -face GP appointments has received more than 100,000 signatures. It was set up by Mike Barlow, uh, whose wife Laura died earlier this year after being misdiagnosed. She was told during a telephone call with a GP last October that she had endometriosis and in January she found out that she actually had cancer and died the following month. Now Mike believes that she'd, if she'd had a face-to-face -face appointment, the doctor would have seen how much pain she was in fact in and the outcome might have been very different. Emily, what's your view on this? Well, I think in an ideal world, Storm, we would all have face-to-face -face appointments. I do think that that is the best way forward. I think that when a doctor or a nurse is um, examining, you know, verbally examining a patient, you, it's not just what the patient's saying. It's how they look, it's how they appear, it's their body language. It's perhaps what they're not saying as well if we come to mental health. I totally understand that for the convenience of some patients, um, telephone calls can be use useful and indeed um, Zoom, although I don't know if doctor surgeries do do um, Zoom, tele, you know, um, com, sort of teleconferencing calls. But I do think that face to face is much better, and particularly for children, particularly for the very elderly, and particularly for those that, like in that instance um, with Laura Barlow, she said she she thought she was told she had endometriosis, which so she was probably complaining of abdominal pain, and actually it turned out to be I think ovarian cancer. And perhaps if she'd been, as her husband said, if she'd been seen face to face, a doctor would have given immediately blood tests as a as a as you know abundance of caution. My, my daughter, I took her to a face to face doctor's appointment at our surgery. I bad mother here, I thought she just sprained her ankle. The doctor said to me, you know what, I've looked at your daughter's ankle, I think it is a sprain, but I'm just gonna send you to hospital. Here's the letter for the x-ray. Turned out she'd broken her ankle. Oh, okay. So, exactly. And so, and so maybe if that had just been a telephone appointment, maybe, you know, that wouldn't have been diagnosed and it would have, our eyes, the pair of mine have made it much worse. So. But if we do all face-to-face -face appointments, Crystal, it could mean that less people are able to get an appointment and we already know how hard it is to get a GP appointment. Well, the question is, should all GP appointments be a mandatory face-to-face -face appointment? And I think that that would be absolutely ridiculous. Um, it is not necessary for all GP appointments to be face-to-face. -face. And uh, unfortunately... Um, you know, mistakes can be made, and, and it, this is a really tragic case of this poor lady, but there's nothing to say, firstly, that had she seen a GP face-to-face, mm. -face, that they would have diagnosed that, that, that horrific cancer that she suffered from. But, but secondly, so a couple of weeks ago, I've not been looking after myself lately. It's been my birthday, I've been having a few drinks, okay. and my gout That's has come light. on. Oh. Okay. So, you are actually Henry VIII. I am Henry You are VIII. Henry VIII. Thank you very much. Well, we, we should, we should re, 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 recall this wolf hall. Thank you very much. I've always known that I have royal connections. Um, but, but seriously, so um, I had a gout attack, haven't had one in years, and it's really painful when you can't walk. And I needed the medication that brings down the swelling and is the, the pain-killing uh, medication. So I managed to get through to the doctor's surgery and I was offered a phone consultation. There was no need for me to go to the doctor's surgery. They could see on my records that I had suffered previously. Mm -hmm. We went through it on the phone. All I needed was that the doctor, once we'd gone through the questions, to send my pharmacy a prescription and get me those those those, those tablets and we're doing a follow-up um, next week. Firstly, it would have been absolutely well, painful the beyond, be on the, uh, on, phone, on the well. phone again okay. but but he said if it didn't clear up or if it got worse obviously get back in touch then he would see me had i had to go to the doctor's surgery it would have been completely impractical but more importantly it would have taken an appointment from someone who did need to see the doctor now i think if you really insist on seeing the doctor you should be allowed to and so i think patients should have the choice they should have the choice but there are times where it's just not necessary, your repeat prescription, something that you're suffering from already, something that, that, that can be easily diagnosed over the phone that is based on your medical records already. And to the idea of taking an appointment from someone more vulnerable mm. for something like that is ridiculous. Well, I've had okay. the opposite, actually. I've had the opposite. I've, I need to repeat, repeat prescription for something. And I've been told that it won't be issued to me by my doctor's surgery unless I go and have um, a blood pressure check and I have to go in. And, um, and it, I, was, I suppose for certain medication, that may be the case as well. And yes. only 
Maybe the doctor will know that, but it is true. How on earth is the doctor going to take your vitals, your blood pressure, whatever it is they, they have to do if you're just on the phone? Vicky from London, what's your view on this? Uh, yeah, I really think that a doctor needs to be seen and, um, and that the doctor should actually be looking at what's going on. But Vicky, I had a severe... Yeah, sorry. No, no, you tell us your story. Um, I had a severe throat infection and I could see that it was strep. I had never had strep in this country, so I had to go and see the doctor. I had a high temperature and I was turned away and told, you know, they can make an appointment for me in about a week. And I know that, that you have to have something taken in, you know, I have to have antibiotics. Um, so I, I, I refused, you know, I said, I have to see somebody, just let the doctor look at my throat. And then, anyway, I was turned away um, and they ended up making an appointment for me with a nurse practitioner in the hospital, which I went to see and I ended up getting um, treatment for that. But what I'm saying is if the doctor saw me, could see my glands were swollen, could see my throat, they would have given me something there and then. And instead of having me wander all around London with a high temperature, which, it, which That's all I it must have been a horrific experience, but I can, suppose. Can, can I ask you, Vicky, though, did, did you tell the doctor that your glands were swollen? Did you tell the doctor that... Well, that it would be the receptionist, presumably, that would have been triaged. Did, I mean, did, did you get a phone appointment with the doctor or was it just the receptionist? Well, unfortunately, I didn't mention I could barely talk, so I had to go down to the clinic. I didn't call because, I, you know, I could, it was a squeak. They could most probably wouldn't even be able to hear me. I had trouble even talking to the receptionist. So that's why I actually sound, went down Vicky, there. Vicky, this sounds like one of those situations that sounds quite unusual that the, the receptionist would have made that call in your situation. But the argument against, and even in your case, the idea of all appointments being face-to-face -face is if all appointments are face-to-face, -face, they are longer appointments. That means that any doctor can see fewer and speak to fewer patients in a day and so the fact that you had to wait a week is testament to the fact that we don't have enough GPs it would only compound that problem even further if all appointments had to be face to face your point in that aspect I would also stress that when people are getting misdiagnosed a doctor is trained to see certain things ask you questions you know to lead them down to the um, you know of eventually making a proper diagnosis without actually seeing the, the patient then those things this is how it's happening we're, we're misdiagnosing and, and people are suffering the consequences it's, but a, that's fair, my, it's a fair point uh, Vicky thank you very much for calling and sharing your story uh, Janet from Shropshire what's your thoughts when it comes to in face-to-face uh, in -face -face appointments rather than on the phone appointments well in my opinion there should be more face-to-face -face appointments Admitted, not everybody needs to see face to face, but in my my situation, I should have had face to face. What happened was I had really bad pains in my in my back. I rang the doctors up. The doctor rang me back, and he just said, "I'll make you a prescription for tramadol. I'll go along to the chemist and pick them up, and you'll be fine." Something told me it was more than that, and my daughter said to me, "Mom, if you don't ring the ambulance, I'm ringing it." They rang the ambulance, I was blue-lighted to hospital, then I was blue-lighted to the next hospital. Um, I had to have uh, life-saving surgery because my gallbladder had burst. Oh, my goodness. And had you not so, gone to the, the... I presume you went to A&E then. Had you not gone to A&E, it could have been a very different end to that story. Janet, that's, that's really scary. I wonder, though, whether had you gone to a face-to-face -face appointment, whether the doctor still could have misdiagnosed that? Well, it, the, the sheer pain that I was in, and I was trying to point out to him exactly where the pain was. When the ambulance crew came out, they just thought that I was having heart trouble. And I said, no, it's the opposite side. But see, this. oh, so when the ambulance initially came out, but once they saw the location of it, they knew this was a, a, a blue well, lighter, this was something that had to be seen immediately? Well, initially, the ambulance crew... Uh, the one the ambulance uh, crew asked me, "Have you ever suffered with Munchausens?" Well, Munchausens, I realised afterwards, is when basically you you're crying out just to get into hospital with with imaginary pain. Oh, hmm. 
Right. Yeah. So they so they were all quite dismissive with you. But that's yeah. that was face to face that they asked you that, which says to me that the, the chances of misdiagnosis and also goes to show an earlier story we did in the papers with Jeremy that it's, you know, when, when women go in with pain, whether that's gynecological pain or just pain in general, they are often dismissed. Um, and, and that sort of rings true in your story as well, that it could unfortunately just be one of those statistics. But very, very sad. But thank goodness eventually you were seen and you got that life-saving treatment. Janet, thank you very much for your call. Michael from London, face-to-face -face appointments compulsory for all? Um, no. Uh, um, hello, Storm. I, uh, this morning I had, I've got a sinus infection. Very, it's been a few days. Sorry. I've lost five, six o'clock this morning. I find uh, the, the uh, uh, 111 service mm -hmm. uh, and they've got a new thing now that you can go to a chemist and they, they sort it all out. So I went to a chemist and uh, had a small interview and he's, I've got my antibiotics and I'm back indoors in the wall. Brilliant. Michael, that sounds like a... I haven't heard it. I didn't know you could do that with 111. No, I think could... it's a new thing, yeah. They're, they're giving more responsibility to pharmacists to be able to prescribe things for you. Well, that is very efficient. So, but, but people would have concerns over pharmacists being able to diagnose as well because maybe, maybe it's not sinus, sinusitis, maybe it's, I can't think of anything else with similar symptoms because <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but it, it could have been something else. Are you worried about that, misdiagnosis? No, it was a lot. I've had it all my life, so it's, it's, it's gone through my history. So okay. they, they do a bit of background as well. All right, but Michael. I think, it, you know, it's going to work, that is. Well, I am delighted to hear that, and actually I'm going to commit that to memory because that's a, a service that I'll, I'd be taking up in the future. That sounded great and very efficient for you, Michael. Thank you. Susan from Angus, what's your view? Face-to-face -face appointments have to happen? Hi there. Yes, face-to-face -face should happen. Um, it was quite some time ago now, a good few months, but I'd had a pain from my shoulder blade that went through to my chest. Mm -hmm. As the week progressed, I couldn't even lift my left arm up higher than, you know, my elbow. Oh. And uh, I, the night before I phoned the doctor, I, could, I couldn't get asleep because I couldn't deep breathe. It was affecting my breathing. So I phoned my surgery at eight o'clock in the morning and the doctor phoned me back and she was... I, I, in the, when she was speaking to me, I said, well, I've also got a pain down the left side of my leg, uh, but I did have sciatica. So she then so hooked onto this sciatica, and I said, but it's not that, it's my breathing, it's my pain I've got, you know, and she said, you're talking like you're in a fishbowl, uh, stop interrupting me. I ended the call in tears. I then went to my local pharmacist, and I spoke to one of the girls behind the counter, explained what I was going through. She then got the pharmacist, who then took me into the little room, and she says, I'm going to call for paramedics. I said, you can't do that. I was crying. You can't do that. She says, I can and I will. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was on the, the phone to the local hospital, who told her to give me a soluble aspirin. A paramedic turned up, and she said her colleagues were in another town, and they would be coming out too. They came out, I got hooked up to the ECG, whatever you call it. They took my blood, they took my blood pressure. Susan, I'm running out uh, of time, but I want to find out what sorry, happened. Sorry, sorry. No, well, right. actually, yeah, they wasted the time of three paramedics, two ambulances, the, the, the time of the pharmacist for the sake of 10 minutes. It wasn't my heart for the sake of 10 minutes. And I, I, I did raise a complaint and I was upheld. Susan, that's, that does sound very troubling indeed. And with those symptoms, I would have been straight to A&E anyway. That sounded incredibly concerning. Um, but, but actually what it sounded like was the pharmacists were on it as well. They're a good port of call, actually, if you don't feel like you're getting what you need maybe from your GP. Uh, Susan, thank you very much for, for your call and, and sharing your experiences with that for all your calls.